Okay, so hello fourth grade. I decided to do a short video on how to get onto StoryWorks um, website. The website that you go to is linked in um, Google Classroom. So when you get to it, storyworksscholastic.com, it's gonna look, oops, I'm logged in. I'll log out. So it's gonna look like this. And you go up here in the corner, right up in that very corner, the right corner of your computer screen, hit login. Now I am a teacher. You're gonna say I am a student and then you're going to put your password in. Look in Google Pass, um, in Google Classroom, and also I've emailed it. It's in your supply bag. It starts with an S. I'm not going to put it up here because anybody can watch our YouTube videos and get our password. And I'm only supposed to give it out to my students. So look up your password and then sign in. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to sign in as a teacher so that I'm in. But what you're going to see. is your StoryWorks magazines, not the renewal for teachers, but you're gonna see a list of magazines. Right here, browse latest issues. Now, we're gonna pick March, April 2020 because we're not using May and June. If you wanna look at your May or June, you may. It doesn't matter. Um, if you read ahead on it, it can even count for your 20 minutes of reading time if you want. Um, there's some very good stuff, but we're gonna stick to March, April. And when you click on that, you can see that it kind of goes down to show you all the articles that you can get into. It'll even let you look at the magazine where you can flip through it. So um, I think that's presentation view. If you want to look at your magazine online, that's kind of a cool option too. look at that. You can flip through the pages. So here's your magazine and it's just like an online book. Now, our article on coal mining is called Out of the Burning Darkness, and it's actually very good. I've read your article to you halfway. We are right about here at Scorching Heat. So that's what I'm going to start reading with you and finish tomorrow at Scorching Heat, and I'll read all the captions and things. Um, but at, what I would like to do right now is go and show you the video and the vocabulary because um, some of you mentioned that you had a hard time getting onto it or your computer was too slow or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop right here and I'm gonna put the video on for you that we would have watched in the classroom. And it's gonna show you kind of what was going on around 1909. It's gonna show you some background on coal mines and then we'll go through the vocab. And then tomorrow what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll finish the article with you and talk to you more about it. Okay, so I'm going to stop right here and put our video on. My name is Kristen Lewis and I'm excited to take you behind the scenes of my latest article, Out of the Burning Darkness. It's the story of a 14 year old boy named Albert Buckle. Albert survived one of the most devastating coal mining accidents in American history. On November 13, 1909, fire broke out at the Cherry Mine in Cherry, Illinois, where Albert worked. In the end, 259 people lost their lives. When I started this story, I knew I wanted to help you feel like Albert would have felt, to be a kid coal miner in the early 20th century. Whether or not Albert realized it, 1909 was an exciting time to be alive in America. Food was affordable. Technology was advancing quickly. There were cool new inventions, like the telephone, the washing machine, and the automobile. There were fancy new fashions and new kinds of entertainment like silent movies and ragtime music. America's population was growing fast. In the early 20th century, hundreds of thousands of immigrants were streaming into America every year. 
bringing with them new customs, foods, and traditions that helped make America's culture richer. Across the United States, there was a feeling of confidence. For many, it felt like life was just getting better and better. But all that progress came at a price, a human price. Back then, many kids like Albert didn't get to go to school. They had to work instead. Children toiled in cotton factories, sticking their tiny fingers into the dangerous machines that spun thread. They stood on street corners selling newspapers or shining shoes. They sat hunched over sewing machines in dreary factories. And they worked for hours in the darkness of coal mines like cherry. Anytime I write a historical article, I begin by creating a list of ideas or topics I might want to cover. As you can see, I had a lot more ideas than I would be able to fit in my story. But I wasn't worried. I had help. My research partner, Adi Braun. Adi and I read all these books and articles. We looked at historical records and diaries and we spoke to a historian. We also worked with a local librarian in Cherry who generously sent us a package of primary sources, survivor stories, charts, and Albert's own words about the events of that day. It was a lot to keep track of. That's why I kept a timeline and a list of notes and terms. I also studied a diagram of the mine itself. This is about where Albert was when the fire broke out. This is the air shaft through which he eventually escaped. One of the most interesting parts of my research was learning about coal mining. In 1909, there were around 700,000 people working in mines. In fact, many Americans today have ancestors who were coal miners during this period, including me. That's my great-grandfather. Coal mining was not an easy job. Shh. Miners often worked for 10 hours a day or more, six days a week. They used heavy tools and dangerous dynamite to carve out the coal from the ground. Accidents were common. But like many miners, Albert probably felt a sense of pride. The work paid better than many farming and factory jobs. Coal miners formed close bonds with each other. If a miner got injured on the job, his fellow miners would usually collect money for him and his family. After my research was done, I was ready to get to work. For me, the hardest part of writing this story was weaving together so many elements, the history of coal mining, the fire in the cherry mine, the struggle of child workers, and the changes that came in the years after the disaster. I needed a way to pull all that information into a clear and compelling article. To do this, I used two types of writing, narrative and informational. As you read, see if you can spot the difference. Why might I have chosen different types of writing? What purpose do they serve in the story? Even though I'm finished with the article, I still find myself thinking a lot about Albert Buckle and the other child workers of the early 20th century. I hope you will think about them too as you read Out of the Burning Darkness.